Houdini 21 has introduced Pyro into the CopNet. So let's go ahead and look at some of the Pyro stuff as well as the lights to go along with the Pyro. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop down a CopNet here and I'm gonna dive inside. And I've already got my viewport set up here. I can press D over this and just make sure that we're set to the dark color scheme and turn off our grid so we get a nice viewport here to look at. And then I can drop down a pyro configure node. Notice we have three options for this. We have the billowy smoke, the colored smoke, or the dry ice. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the billowy smoke and all three of these are going to be recipes here that drop down a chain of nodes. Now, this COPS Pyro can be a little bit confusing to start off with. And I plan on going deep into this or deeper into this about how to set this all up. But I wanted to take a look at the lights here kind of first and look at the recipes here. These are good learning materials for just understanding how to set it up. But we want to come and use these lights inside of COPS. So if I go ahead and press play here, you can see that this is already lit and we get some some sort of a smoke sim going here. And if I look at this pyro block end, you see this is a fully 3D simulation. But as soon as we use this rasterize to volume, it's going to or rasterize volume, it's going to flatten that down to a 2D plane. So it's going to basically turn this into an image. But it's using a light here to kind of give us what it would look like if it was rendered out. Now this is pretty low quality, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump back to the start here. And I'm gonna come over to this pyro configure, and we have this divisions set, uh, setting here. We can set it to resolution or voxel size. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to resolution. I'm gonna crank this up to like 300. This is running off of your GPU, so it's pretty quick. So if I go ahead and press play here, you can see we get a much higher resolution simulation here. And this looks a lot better. So let's come back to this pyro light and this rasterized volume. We got some different settings on here to mess with the density. We can turn this down if we want. If we want to mess with that, we can. I'm going to go ahead and leave that not on 110, but on 10. And we can come to this pyro light ambient here. And we've got some different settings here. So we have a density scale on this light. I can turn that down and you can see how that affects our light as well. I'm gonna go ahead and set that back. We can mess with the exposure. These do all of the things that you would expect for the lighting to do. We can also change our color. And we can change the color of our ambient light. Now this is exactly what it says. It is an ambient light. We also have the ability to pipe in an environment map. So if I tap down a ramp RGB and I wire this into that environment map, you can see now we get lighting based off of this ramp. So I can come to this and I can actually take this and I can rotate it. And you can see that that's going to rotate down here in our view. And you can see that that actually affects how our simulation is being lit. So if we wanted something like the light coming from the top, we can do, you know, we could just set it to vertical and we get it coming from the top. I can rotate that 180 degrees. Now it's coming from the bottom and all sorts of different things with this. So you can do lots of different cool things with this. Let's take a look at the other lights here. So we have light from points, which again is going to take in a density. If I plug this into our diffuse color here, we don't get anything to start off with. Now I can drop down a SOP geometry here. And actually we can use this as a directional light, which just gives us a light direction to play with and we can drop our exposure around or play with our density scale. We had it set to 10 on the other one. This gives us a much nicer light. So if you just want one you know, light, light source, we can use this as our direction and we can play around with our direction here. So if I wanted to change the way that it's coming from, I can change it to, you know, whatever we want for this. Or we can drop down a soft geometry node. We can drop down a, an add. I can add a point here and I can move this around. Let's say maybe to there. 
and I can wire this into our points. And you can see that's automatically going to take over to our point. And I can actually pin my viewport now. I can come in here and I can, well, I'm not press enter. If I move this around, you can see how that's going to affect our light source here. And we can add in multiple. I'm going to go ahead and unpin this. Let's say you want to add in another one. Let's come to the second one here. Let's move it kind of over here. We can jump out now. You can see that now we have two lights coming from this. Now I can also come into this and I can drop down a, let's do a color node. I'm just going to do an attribute wrangle, but we'll just set it to a color. So I can select points, whatever point this is. We'll go with point one for this. And I can set this color to be maybe red. If I come back here, you can see that that is going to affect the color of our actual light. So you can add in the light color based off of that. And you can come and affect the different you know, light settings in here as well. So I can come in here still and adjust the exposure if I wanted to, or the intensity or the overall color, which is going to like kind of tint our lights in a way. So you can do all different things with that. There's also the pyrolite scatter. which if I take this in here, the density in again, when I pipe that into our diffuse, see it's going to give us an issue. Uh, an issue. It says not enough uh, sources specified. If I set our emission to our temperature, you can see that we get a sort of emission going on here. So I can set up our density here like we had, or I can turn down our emission scale. You can play around with it however you want to get whatever you want. You can also come in here and let's say if we like our light, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Let's come back to our ambient light. And maybe we come up with the intensity just a little bit. Actually, maybe I do like that ramp. Let's do that ramp RGB again. And let's come back in here and wire that back into our environment map. But let's maybe change the colors here to maybe a lighter blue. Let's maybe take this bit more towards white. So maybe it's just a little bit tinted blue. And it's coming from the top. So we can take that and let's say we like this ambient light from points or the light from points. I mean, we can take this and we can chain them together. So now if I go ahead and lower our exposure here, if I bring this all the way down, you can see that we have our just our ambient light and then we can bring in some of that light from these light points. And I could come in here and maybe we want to change this color to be a really harsh purple or something then we can get this type of an effect going. So we can chain our lights together just by wiring in the light into the light imports. And then we can wire them into that diffuse color and we can get some lighting going on our actual smoke. So that is how we can use the pyro light sources in combination with that rasterized volume. There's also some different recipes. Like I said, we have this billowy smoke recipe. Sorry, that was the one that we just have been using. Go ahead and get rid of those. Uh, the other ones are this colored smoke, which gives us this. Let's maybe come back in here and up the resolution on this one as well. So we can get some colored smoke going on here. Pretty cool simulation here. Get some nice color mixing in there as well. Or the other one is the dry ice, uh, was that? Yeah, power configure dry ice. Which gives us a pig head that has some dry ice like smoke rolling over it. Let's increase this resolution as well. And I can come in here, press play. You can see we get some nice smoke interaction with this pig head. And again, this is a 2D image basically. So we can take the outputs of these. Let's say we wanted to take this smoke sim 
and we wanted to take a file node and we can blend our smoke sim over this butterfly. If we did like a screen, you can see that we get our smoke sim over our butterfly there. So lots of different things that you can do with this. Maybe not so much a final quality sim uh, for like a, a hero shot, but you know, you can use this for like background shots and get some nice comping going on with these effects and a combination with the lights makes for a nice maybe background thing that's a uh, background element that's maybe blurred out or something where you don't have to actually go back and render everything out. You can use these lights to really dial in the look of your smoke sim or whatever it may be and get some nice, you know, background looking elements. So anyways, hopefully this helps you out and you now understand the pyro lights a little bit better. Like I said, I do plan on going into more detail about the whole pyro setup inside of cops, I'm kind of working through that as not as we speak, but you know, as time goes on here, I'm kind of working through this and making sure that uh, I understand it in a way that I can explain it as well. So I will probably have some of that coming up in the future, not too distant future. So stay tuned if you want to learn more about Pyro and Cops. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.